How many people were on your executive team at UPN? Oh, well, we had a really small, lean, green, uh, um, what do you call it? Lean, lean and mean uh, group of people. Uh, I had a manager, I believe, or director level person and assistant. But I don't think it was much bigger than that. I think it was just the three of us. How did you decide which screenwriters would come in to pitch? Well, when you are um, an executive, a lot of things come through agencies. So we had our fair share of things that came through agents. But because I was a woman of color in a company that was very much, you know, our mission was diversity, um, even as, you know, as programmers, we... Um, we found a lot of people on our own. Not everybody was, you know, especially people of color were not necessarily represented at the same ratio, rate. I don't know what the word is. We weren't, we weren't um, getting the same kinds of agents. And also when agents were pitching us people to come, um, you know, to come in with ideas uh, or to get on staff, they would always pitch the brown people last. And I was very sensitive to that. So uh, a lot of times I had to go get them, I had to go find them. Like so, how? Well, there's so many ways that, you know, you can get recommendations from other people that you know. Um, you can scout them at, now these, day, these days, you can scout them in competitions and programs and in festivals. So it's a lot easier now than it was then. But it was probably a lot of, and, and also I will say, I was always at the comedy clubs. And a lot of the things that I was doing at comedy were finding those those talented up and coming comics. I was probably at a comedy club every maybe four or five nights a week. Ooh, sounds like fun work. But I also had a lot of friends who were comics. And so we were constantly out at, you know, the improv or the laugh factory or the comedy store. Um, uh, every now and again, we'd have to trundle all the way out to the ice house. But for the most part, um, I was surrounded by a lot of comedy writers anyway in my group. I used to get together every single Saturday for 10 years. Uh, I was part of something called the breakfast, I think we call it the, breast, the breakfast group, but it was it was a Saturday breakfast. We had it at 4, four and 20 um, over at Laurel and yes, Riverside. I've been, I've been there. Okay, so I lived on Riverside Drive. And so we, we had a, this group and it was a group of, I was the only executive, it was the odd man out, but it was actors and writers for the most part. But we were all working in the industry. And it was a group of, of people that half of us came from my high school and then the other half came from um, one of my friends' college group, whatever. It was like this whole group of people. And I met a lot of people that way too. And there were a lot of introductions that were made. But yeah, you just, you, you have to be very creative. I also found people, you know, this is sort of going back to the Fox days, you know, we were forced to to come up with interesting ideas. So we were pitching out ideas because people weren't coming to us and saying, hey, I want to do a Fox show. We were the new kids on the block and everybody wanted to go to ABC, NBC and CBS. They did not want to come to Fox. They didn't even know what a Fox show was. And so we had to be very proactive about finding talent and new voices and new ideas and new writers. So I was always just on the hunt, always searching. And I would find people from magazines that they had, magazine articles they had written and, um, and again, their stand up and, you know, plays. I was always at the theater. So you can find people. You just have to know where to look. Were you saying to these agents, please send us more people of color? Sure. And, and they just weren't? Oh, okay. You're getting into a sticky place. Okay. Um, first of all, let's take a look at the number of people of color who were at the agencies. This was the 80s. There were probably a handful. Um, there were not that many in general. Or no, I'll say this is this is the 90s, the top, top of the 90s, because I got to Fox in 92. So number one, they're not checking for the people of color. If you remember at the time, and again, I don't know the numbers now, but in broadcast, black shows because there were no shows with Asian leads except Margaret Cho once, right? Um, there, I don't think there were a lot of Latinx leads, 
right? We had Chico and the man. We had a very short-lived trial and error. I don't know. They're, they're weren't, they weren't plentiful. So with a lack of agents who were part of those communities, and then, um, you know, when they are looking for, well, who's going to be the next big thing? And then you're looking at the, the networks who are already telling you and the advertisers are saying, well, you are going to get less money for a black show than you are for a white show. It's not the biggest money maker at your agency. You're going to try to hit the home run with the friends, right? You're not going to, you're, you're trying to get that. So I think there are a lot of different factors who are going into this into the mix at the time. So yeah, they were they weren't necessarily um, bringing on board a plethora of of black showrunners. They weren't nurturing them. They weren't. I'm telling you, if I could tell you how how many times I had got they at the time that it was like you get your big ass book of of all the writers and all their resumes and they they physically print them out. You would have to take them back and they would never pitch the the black writers they were always pitching everybody else and even when people come in to pitch it was always a white writer coming in to pitch hey this is a black show and i was like when i got to upn and i was able to make those make those calls myself i said that's not happening anymore it's not where we're going to start so yeah i think now we're we're obviously in a different place thankfully we've evolved I think the age, there are probably many more agents, probably not as many as they should be, and more managers. So there's now a spotlight and there's a way for us to infiltrate the business in a way that we didn't have before. So at that time you said, okay, they're not going to do it the way we want it or there's not access to who we want, so we'll go and find them. Sure. We're going to look for them. And a lot of those times too, we plucked the number two off of a show that did have somebody you know, uh, that did have a, 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 a black lead probably in, a, in um, you know, who were coming up the ranks and we would, we would find, okay, well, let's, let's, let's get that next person who's, who's ready. 